Welcome to Two Guys in a Ride. Today we're going to review the 2022 Ford Maverick XLT. I'll tell you about the horsepower, cargo, dimensions, and safety. And Nathan will show you the interior, the controls, and all the technology. But before we get started, take just a moment, click that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring that bell notification up top so you never miss one of our videos. Today, we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. This is the all new 2022 Ford Maverick. Now, Ford says it's the first standard full hybrid pickup in America and the most fuel efficient truck on the market with a targeted EPA estimated rating of 40 miles per the gallon in the city. Now, while its compact size makes it easy to maneuver and park, and there's room for five adults with plenty of storage space. Now there are four trim levels, starting with the XL that is at 19,995 with the 2.5 liter hybrid engine and front wheel drive. Now you can add all wheel drive and the two liter engine for a total of 24,795. Then we step up to the XLT at 22,280 with the 2.5 liter hybrid and front wheel drive or you can add all wheel drive and the two liter engine for a total of 27,725. Then there's the Lariat at 25,490 with the 2.5 liter hybrid and front wheel drive, or you could add the all wheel drive and two liter engine for a total of 30,935. And then there is the first edition at 33,005, and that's available only with the 2.5 liter hybrid engine and front wheel drive. No all-wheel drive on the first edition. Now this Maverick is powered by the two-liter EcoBoost aluminum inline four-cylinder with double overhead cam and TI VCT with forged steel crankshaft and a bore of 3.44 and a stroke of 3.27 with a 9.3 to one compression producing 255 horsepower, excuse me, 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque and it's driven by an eight-speed automatic transmission, and as I said, this one does have all-wheel drive. Now, if you wanna know the difference between front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive and full-wheel drive, and what a displacement, uh, what engine displacement means, or what those numbers and letters on your sidewalls of your tires tell you, check out my notes in the description under this video, and I explain all of those things for you in a little bit of geek speak. Okay, out front, these are standard LED headlights with incandescent turn signals, however, and it does have that matte black grille with a tough looking rectangular design, and I like the matte black trim bar that spans from side to side as well. Up front and dead set in the middle is the Ford blue oval front and center. Now, it is a body colored front bumper on the upper part, and it does have that matte black lower bumper with the air intake and the side skirts or the, the side pieces on the bumper as well. Up above, there is a relatively flat aluminum hood, and there is an acoustic laminated windshield with variable intermittent wipers, and it has a windshield wiper de-icer function too. Okay, now, these are the 17-inch unique aluminum wheels, and they are wrapped in P22560R17 all-terrain black sidewall tires. Now, I really do like the cut above the fenders. It makes it look like it has a little bit of flared wheel wells, and you see that matte black rocker panel trim down below. Kind of a little hard to see. This is a darker gray color. Uh, it is, uh, I think it's called carbonite metallic. And now, up front, it is an independent McPherson strut type suspension with coil springs, twin tube, hydraulic gas pressurized shocks, has a stabilizer bars, and aluminum lower control arm, steel subframe and cast knuckle. Out back is an independent multi-link trailing arm suspension with monotube hydraulic gas pressurized dampers with hydraulic rebound stop, coil springs, stabilizer bar, steel subframe and cast knuckle. Now, this Maverick does have the FX4 off-road package, as I mentioned a minute ago, and that in includes those exposed front tow hooks, the FX4 
bed decal and it does have skid plates underneath as well. Now these are heated outside body, uh, heated outside rear view mirrors with body color skull caps and the doors they do have a keyhole for locking and unlocking and there is a black belt line and window trim. Also you'll see there isn't a cut line between the cab and the bed because this is a unibody design and not a body on frame with a separate cab and separate bed construction. Now up top smooth and flat no sunroof there. Let's take a look around back. Okay, these are halogen rear tail lights, and I gotta uh, apologize for a little bit of the noise. We're here on the lot, and there's a semi here waiting to pick up a few vehicles. Now there is the blue Ford oval, and it does have an integrated rear camera. It is a locking handle that is a power lock uh, for the release, and I do like Maverick, the name stamped in the steel uh, tailgate panel, and you see the rear bumper with a plastic step plate, and on the bumper, you'll see that the uh, license plate is offset a little bit, uh, it's off-centered, but that allows for the, um, the mounting of the trailer hitch right there without having to go lower and drag the ground. This has the 4K tow package, which includes a trailer hitch receiver with seven pin connector, transmission oil cooler, high capacity radiator. It also includes an upgraded cooling fan and the, trail, uh, the trailer brake controller, which is on the dashboard just to the left of the steering wheel and about where the driver's left knee is, just above that. Now, looking at the tailgate, the, uh, it features clamps that double as bottle openers and it's, the tailgate itself is rated at 500 pounds. So you can invite your friends over and sit there and have a drink. Now, the Maverick can carry wide stuff too, thanks to its multi-position tailgate. It opens normally, but also has a halfway open position where you just unclip and clip the support cables and you hook them onto the latch pins just above. It's extremely simple and easy to do so. And um, if I didn't want to turn my back to you, I'd show you exactly how to do that, but we'll overlay a picture here. Now the bed floor and the sides are low, so almost any size adult, and you can see, can reach in and over and grab something off the floor. The four and a half foot bed with its sprayed in liner, you can see here, Carry, can carry 1,500 pounds of payload, uh, payload which uh, equivalent, Ford says, of roughly 37 bags of 40 pound mulch. Not sure if 38 would send it over the top or not. Anyway, and there are also dimples along the bed sides for two by fours and two by sixes, so you can have double tier stacking. It does have LED box lighting and bed, bed tie down locking rails with two locking brackets. Now, it also has in-bed storage with a false bottom on the right rear passenger side, and it has plastic bed caps that run up to the back of the cab, so when you put things in and out, it won't bother or scratch up the paint. Now, there is a full-size tire mounted up under the bed, and one of my favorite things in the bed is a 400-watt 110 uh, outlet and it also has pre-wired connections for do-it-yourselfer types. There's even a QR code that you can uh, scan to get truck bed ideas from Ford. And speaking of that bed again, it does have a total cargo volume of 33.3 cubic feet. Now, I will admit that lots of reviewers, car reviewers, and dealerships will quote those numbers like the cubic feet. But does that really give you the information you can use? Well. We don't think so. <laughs> we don't just talk Twinkies and jars of Costco mayo here. Nope, we'll give you the actual cargo area dimensions so you'll know before you buy it if that new flat screen TV, jumbo pack of paper towels, golf clubs, coolers, lawn chairs, you name it, if they'll all fit inside or not. So here we go. Bed floor link from the uh, Front to the back here, not including the tailgate, is 54.4 inches. Bed floor length with the tailgate down is 72 inches. Bed width at the belt line is 53.3 inches. Bed width at the wheelhouse is internally is 42.6 inches. Bed wall height from the floor to the side of the bed is 20.3 inches. And lift-in height is a relatively low 30.1 inches. That's not bad whatsoever. 
Let's talk about some of the safety systems on this 2022 Ford Maverick. Well, it does have the Ford Copilot 360 technology, which includes standard pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking and automatic high beam headlights. It also does have hill descent control, and there are some available options that include adaptive cruise control with stop and go, blind spot information system with cross traffic alert, lane centering and evasive steering assist, and five standard drive modes, which include normal, echo, sport, slippery, and tow or haul, which is used to enhance performance and confidence over various driving conditions. There are also packages available on this 2022 Ford Maverick, and I did mention a couple of those. One of them is the 4K tow package. There is the Ford Copilot 360. There is an XLT luxury package, a Lariat luxury package, and as I mentioned again as well, the FX4 off-road package, plus the Lariat first edition package, but again, remember, that is only the 2.5 liter and only in front wheel drive. All right, let's talk about the dimensions. Okay, on the dimensions, it does have a front track of 63.4 inches and a rear track of 62.8 inches. Maximum width is 83.5 inches and length front to rear is 100, front to rear, 199.7 inches. Does have an overall height of 68.7 inches and it rides on a wheelbase of 121.1 inches. Now, minimum ground clearance is 8.6 inches. And again, you can see this one is up a little bit more than that because of the FX4 package. Front overhang is 34.1 inches. Rear overhang is 44.5 inches. And that contributes to an approach angle of 21.6 degrees and a departure angle of 21.2 degrees. It has a breakover or ramp angle of 18.1 degrees. Now its curb weight as it sits is 3,731 pounds. And as I mentioned before, it does have a maximum payload of 1,500 pounds. Remember, 37 bags of 40 pound mulch. Towing, 2,000 pounds is standard, but this one does have the 4K tow package, so it will tow up to 4,000 pounds. Turning circle is 40 feet and fuel capacity is 13.8 gallons for the 2.5 liter. Ford has yet to announce the fuel capacity for the two liter, which is this one. Safety, well, neither IIHS nor National Highway Transportation Safety Administration have yet rated this vehicle as the time of this filming. So I'm sure it is in queue and that will be coming forward. What about performance? Well, zero to 60, seven seconds. Top speed, uh, to be determined. Ford hasn't announced that yet either. And braking 60 to zero is 119 feet. What about its appearance? Well, I like the new look with its few subtle big Ford truck design cues. And I like the squared edges and the uncluttered overall design. I think it's a pretty good looking little truck. All right. Warranty. Well, basic warranty is three years, 36,000 miles. Powertrain warranty is five years, 60,000 miles. And it does have roadside assistance for five years and 60,000 miles. What about its economy? Well, 22 city, 29 highway, and 25 combined for the two liter EcoBoost. And it does emit 5.8 tons of CO2 emissions for every 15,000 miles driven each year. Now it's time to take a look inside, but before we do, check out my notes in the description down below and please take just a moment to give us a like, leave a comment, and don't forget, click on that subscribe button right over there. So what do you say, Nate? Show the folks inside, take it away. All right, stepping onto the inside. Now you can notice a couple of interesting things here. First of all, you've got this reground carbon fiber uh, finish, and you'll see that across uh, some of the dash uh, and in the other doors as well. But you've got this bro uh, broken space, uh, but it makes it really easy to reach in and grab the handle to, to close the door. You've also got storage for, you know, like a water bottle that's like a liter high. And then you've got another bottle of storage here. And then you've got... Um, out up and down for the driver's window and standard for power for the rest. Of course, you get your mirror controls, your window lockout, and then your right and left mirror select. You've got your unlock and lock buttons, uh, but it's just really a unique uh, 
looking door, but they say that that uh, makes it stronger. Now you notice in the front doors they do have one of the eight speakers in, in the system here, but it's a little bit different in the rear and we'll show you that when we get there. All right, so down here, you've got, of course, your brake controller package here. You got your rear uh, lights for the cargo bed here. You got all your lighting controls, plus your dashboard brightness and dimness controls. This is a tilt and telescope uh, wheel, but it is a manual adjustment. All right, let's step in. All right, so the ignition for this particular truck is a keyed ignition, so uh, there's no push start. If there was, it'd be located down here, and then the USBs would be moved over. All right, so we just took the key in, and there we go. You do have analog uh, tack, you have analog speedometer, you've got a partial analog, partial digital engine temperature, and then uh, fuel gauge, and then in the middle you have a 6.5 inch digital driver's information screen that you can customize. Now you do notice on the dashboard you have the same uh, reground carbon fiber finish. It does make for a nice break in the cabin, the, the materials are nice and light. Now this particular uh, trim here, you know, we've got the orange in the vents. You also got the orange down in the trays. And then you've got a little orange back here underneath uh, the storage area for the center armrest, as well as in the door handles. But depending on the seats you get, that color changes. So it's nice, it gives it a splash of color. Uh, now, as far as the steering wheel controls go, you've got your cruise control over here on the left. You got your media volume plus mute. All right, over here on the right, you've got, of course, your driver's information screen controls, and then you've got, you know, some of your more media buttons plus your uh, voice command. Moving over to the center, uh, this is an interesting setup. Uh, it is an 8-inch screen. So it is a SYNC 3, so it's got a simpler system on it. The screen is 8-inch. That's uh, all the bigger you're going to get. This area here is um, like a cubby storage, and there's another one behind it. Okay, uh, so there is some nice storage area, but it would be nice if you could get a, like a, you know, 10 to 12 inch screen in there. Now, that being said, it has a wired Apple CarPlay, wired Android Auto, AM and FM, Bluetooth, uh, Sirius XM, and of course, Ford Pass Connect. And then it has um, a 4G Wi-Fi uh, LTE hotspot. Down below, you've got a few physical controls that you can control uh, the infotainment screen with. You do have your hazard button here. Moving on down there, uh, you've got your all physical climate control buttons. This particular vehicle is a single zone uh, auto climate control. You can get it in dual if you want. You do have three stage heated seats and a heated steering wheel button, which is awesome. Now, down here, you've got two USBs. You have a USB-C, a USB-A, and then if you had a wireless uh, charger in your vehicle, that would be right here. This one doesn't have it. But you can lay your phone down there, and I imagine you could probably buy one of those wireless charging pads and plug that right in and use that anyways from an aftermarket product. Okay, a little bit of storage down here. You come back here, you've got uh, dual cup holders, and then down here you've got some more storage in the back. Now, they say that this front one is for sticking your phone in, so you can have it upright while you're driving, and if you need to glance at it, it's right there. I should mention you do have a 12-volt auxiliary uh, plug-in right there as well. So three plug-ins in the front. The, um, the shifter is the standard Ford shifter. It's the rotary shifter. And then down here you have got uh, electronic parking brake. This is your drive mode controls. So I have uh, normal and tow haul. I've got slippery, mud ruts, sand, and back to normal. All right, this is your traction control on or off. And it will tell you in the driver's information screen whether it's on or off. This is your auto hold. So if you uh, engage that and you come to a complete stop and the car is still in drive, you can let your foot off the brake and the car will remain at a stop until you press the accelerator. And then down here, you've got hill descent control. And this is your auto start stop defeat. All right. Now, underneath the center armrest, we have got uh, some ample storage here. It's not a super long box because they have the storage area in front of it, but you do have quite a bit of room to put things in and it's fairly deep. Moving over to the right, we have our glove compartment right here. That's a nice, soft, and dampened open. It's a nice, actually quite a large size. 
And then up here, you have a, a auto, auto dimming rear view mirror. Then up here, you've got, of course, your reading lamps and your sunglass storage. Now, both uh, visors are telescoping and they are not lit, but they have a mirror in them. Okay, let's step into the second row. All right, step in the second row. You're gonna notice the same uh, construction in the door. And by the way, the, you know, the, the, everything is a harder plastic, but the uh, armrests are quite nice and soft. Okay, you got the same ground, reground carbon fiber. You can hold the liter bottle in here. Uh, you got another bottle storage here, but guess what's missing? No speakers in the door. So the reason they did that is so that they could get the extra storage in here. The speakers are up in the C-pillars on both sides. So that's that's a kind of a neat change. Uh, and of course, in addition to that, you've got your uh, grab handles right here. You do have a dome light in the back. Um, and then in the center, you have got uh, another USB-C, another USB-A, and a 120-volt, 400-watt max household outlet. And this does not come on the, on the base trim. So this is an upgrade on the XLT. And then they have what they call FITS, F-I-F-F-I-T-S. It's Ford's tether system, and they're going to be selling accessories so you could clip on a cup holder, a single cup holder, a double cup holder. Maybe you want a garbage bag holder or a grocery bag holder. Those will be available as clip-ons. Now, back here, you do have a seat pocket behind the passenger seat. Okay? But let's talk about, what's, uh, about the seat itself. So there is an armrest here. It's covered in plastic right now, but it does come down. Okay, so there are two parts of the seat that move. For the first part is the back. Now, you can't adjust it, okay? But if I grab this little tether and I pull up on it, you can put the headrest in, move the seats up a little bit. You can get this to fold flat. They say you can fit a mountain bike in here uh, by removing the, the front tire. Now, in the back here, you're going to see some more... Um, uh, things for storage back here, you've got some of your, uh, I think this is a, probably your jack and equipment are sitting right back here. All right, put this back. The fun part comes when you lift this up. Okay, so underneath here, Ford has hidden two large uh, storage bins. They have the same tether system that we see in the uh, center back of the center armrest. Um, but they, I, I think those would be for dividers uh, that you can, I know you can get dividers that go in there and there may be other accessories as, as uh, time goes on, but those are all in there. So that's really nice to have. And then you can just uh, pull the lever of the tether again and set the seat down. All right, so the driver's seat is adjusted to where I was sitting. Uh, this has got, I've got about an inch. Of clearance, which is pretty impressive for uh, you know a truck that's smaller than the Ranger pickup, and then uh, headroom, plenty. Gosh, I've got like three inches. So overall, uh, quite comfortable as far as space goes, and my feet have plenty of room underneath the seat. I'm probably halfway underneath the driver's seat at this point, and my feet aren't touching anything. Um, you can't. There's, there's no reclining, and there's of course there's no pulling the the seats forward or back, but Given its size, not bad back here. So overall, it's been really fun to step in and take a look at this Ford Maverick. Um, definitely appealing to a slightly different audience with uh, you know the reground carbon fiber bits, you know the color splashes in here. But um, you know for the price line, what a nice entry level pickup. Well, that's our review of the all new 2022 Ford Maverick and we certainly appreciate you spending some time with us. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And please take a moment, click that subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching.